Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Psycho Family Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. When I was around 10, Thanksgiving was hosted at my house. There was already some family drama between two of my aunts from years before. They refused to attend the same parties and never wanted to speak of the other or about anything involving my cousins. I was much older when I finally knew why. Apparently, Aunt A thought that Aunt B was trying to sleep with her husband when Aunt B denied the accusation, claiming that they were just good friends. Aunt A refused to ever speak to Aunt B again and vice versa. Anyways, Thanksgiving at my house this particular year, a truce was set and everyone was invited for dinner. Naturally, each aunt was in their separate corner with their kids and each generally ignored one another. But there weren't any slight glances or whispered insults, so we had dinner in peace. Now the drama begins. Aunt B decided to leave the party first. She said her farewells and grabbed her kids to load them in the car. My mom, a few more aunts, and cousins went out with her to thank her for coming and being a good sport. Her eldest son, my least favorite cousin, was approached by a little girl walking his way from across the street. She said hello and asked if so-and-so was his dad. He said yeah, and she straight up said, He's my dad too. You're my brother. Dead silence. Everyone knew that it was true except for my aunt and her kids. The reason I didn't like this cousin was because he was just like his dad. Arrogant, stubborn, macho, etc. The apple did not fall far from the tree. Whenever her husband came to drink at parties without his wife, he'd laugh about all of his affairs and the hush money that he paid to keep the other kids fed. He mocked the man who was raising his kids as his own and who knew his wife was openly unfaithful. I had no doubts that my cousin would be just as scummy when he grew up. He made a disgusted face and told her that she was too dirty and full of fleas to be anything special. She started crying and Aunt B called her a little liar and that she needed to go back home instead of spreading lies. She shoved my cousin in the car and drove away. The girl ran back home. We were all shocked into silence, but my mom was angry. She immediately went to Aunt A and demanded to know if she'd been the one to orchestrate everything. She denied it, but for someone who loved gossip, she was very cool about the whole thing. Everyone knew. After everyone left, I asked my mom why no one ever told Aunt B about her unfaithful husband and the other kids. But my mom told me that she'd known for a long time. I thought they'd get a divorce for sure after that day, but everything went on like it always did and my cousin still thinks that that girl is lower than dirt on his shoes. Not my family, but kind of connected to it. My dad and mom were invited to a friend's family Christmas get together, but they declined so they could stay in town. My dad loaned his car to his buddy though, and thought that that was the end of it. On the news the next day, they recognized my dad's car, filled with dead children. Turns out, the buddy's dad went kind of bonkers, shot everyone in the family as they were walking into the house for the Christmas get-together, and strangled all of the children. He placed the adults' dead bodies in the living room and stuffed all of the children into my dad's car, the one that he loaned to his buddy, and the dad drove the car into a ditch. Dad and mom really dodged a bullet, but their good friend, whom they considered their brother, who died trying to save the children, did not. This is about my estranged uncle, 
auntie and cousin. We didn't have any contact for something like 20 years because of a falling out between my dad and my uncle. Fast forward to last year, auntie turns up at parents' house out of the blue without uncle or cousin. Tells us that uncle is dead after a prolonged illness. She didn't contact us to tell us at the time, citing falling out as the reason. Mutual friends who we're still in contact with didn't know about it when we spoke with them. No contact during funeral arrangements. We ask about the illness, and we're given some story about a trip to Thailand several years earlier, where Uncle is supposed to have gotten a tattoo and contracted hepatitis. Uncle developed a drinking problem, which affected his kidneys and along with the hepatitis resulted in organ failure. Told that there was no chance of a transplant because of alcohol problem. He was brought home to die, and did after a week or so. We ask about the burial arrangements. We were told that he was cremated and kept at home in an urn. We asked about the funeral, and we were told that the attendees were cousin, auntie, and her parents, and some non-mutual friends. We speak with a friend of the family who's able to check the registration of the death. We can't find anything. We ask about this. We were told that the death was registered in a different county, so that must be the reason that our friend can't find uncle's death on registry. So, friends and family had no idea. There is no grave. Friend who works in a position to check for the death, having been registered, isn't able to find anything and there was no sort of contact during the illness. The point of death or the funeral. Just an unannounced visit, nearly seven months after the fact. We only have her word to go on. Cousin wasn't present at the visit and ignored the contact that we attempted. Something seems messed up here. I heard this story just last week. My great grandpa had four kids pretty young and was dealing with some depression due to how hard his life was. He left my great grandma out of nowhere when she was only 28 and years later she saw him again with his new wife and four new kids with the same names. He pretty much made a whole new version of his old family once he had the money to support them. Their last name is now infamous to my family and I've actually met a kid with that last name, and I've always wanted to ask who his great-grandpa is, just to see if he's somehow related to me. My mom's uncle lived modestly in a trailer and had no job, outside of a few manual labor jobs here and there. He would routinely get behind on bills and often had his water and other utilities cut off or threatened to be cut off. On several occasions, he would disappear to a large city three hours north of his home for a few days. Every time he came back, he had tons of cash. One night, over a poker game, some people were talking trash and he mentioned that none of them had any idea what it was like to kill a man. One of the people there was my mom's cousin, who claimed that he overheard the conversation. Of course, they probed him for more info, but he wouldn't say anything else. Everyone in the family knew that he had a knack for coming into large sums of cash, but no one ever really knew how he got it, other than maybe poker. He died about 10 years ago. I'm 37, and I just heard this story for the first time over Thanksgiving dinner last week. TLDR? My great uncle may have been a hitman. Sometimes a home can be a very unsafe place to be. My sister and I are about a year apart in age. I'm older than her. And we've been really close for as long as we can remember other than the typical sibling rivalry stuff, nothing too major. However, we were both raised by a single mom. Our mom was a decent mom, 
but she was a bit immature and distant at times. Between my mom working 40 to 50 hours a week and my sister and me at school, we barely saw her most times. Many times on the occasion that we would be at home at the same time as her, she would have some new boyfriend with her. Most of the guys that she brought back were normal guys. One of them even helped me improve my baseball throwing and batting, but that's another story for another time. One time when I was 11 and my sister was 10, my mom brought home a guy named Ken. Not his real name. The name has been changed for reasons that will soon become obvious. My sister and I get a seriously bad vibe from Ken as soon as he enters the house. He starts eyeing my sister in a weird way as soon as he sees her. Thankfully, my sister noticed and said, I gotta meet some friends. I'll be back later. She left the house and met up with her friends. I legit had to leave as soon as well. I had to get to baseball practice. Cut to a few weeks later. Mom says that Ken was arrested and is in jail. My sister and I are shocked, but we would get the shock of a lifetime a few days later. I'm just casually browsing through the newspaper one afternoon, and I see Ken. It's a mugshot. He was arrested in front of an elementary school after he was trying to lure girls into his car. The police had also been observing him, parked in front of the same school over about a week long, doing things. I won't say what he was doing, but I think you can guess. I show the short article and the mugshot to my sister, and she turns as white as a ghost. We confront mom about it, and she suddenly denies that it's Ken. She then tells us to forget about it. That gave us an idea of the type of person our mom was. It was also that point where my sister and I started to watch out for each other more. We essentially had to raise ourselves on from that point. And we often stayed at friends' houses whenever mom had a boyfriend over, so that nothing like that would ever happen again. My sister and I occasionally talked to her. But now that we're both grown adults, we were all but estranged from her. Edit. I need to clear some stuff up about my mom. She was never abusive or neglectful. She was just naive and immature. She worked hard to keep myself and my sister fed, clothed, and loved. But there were plenty of times where she was more concerned with having a boyfriend than taking care of me and my sister. She also had me when she was only 18 and my sister when she was 19. She only brought home guys that she had known for a bit, but she's also not a good read of people. Most of the guys she brought home were actually really cool people. The aforementioned guy at the beginning of the story who helped me out with my baseball skills, for example. This was an experience that my sister and I look back on, and we learned to be better because of it. This story is very old. I was a kid when it happened and I don't remember all of it. My family all lived in the same apartment complex and we got together quite often. My great aunt and her son lived alone in their apartment and she always complained that she felt alone. So we visited her quite often. Her son was 30 or so. I don't remember his exact age and I haven't seen him in years. He's technically my cousin, but I've always referred to him as an uncle just to make it easier. He was always very clingy with me and my other young cousin. My parents never let me alone with him and my dad never trusted him. I remember that he always asked for hugs and gave sloppy kisses only to me and my cousin. I was around 10 and my cousin was 14 the last time we saw him and he constantly asked us to sit on his lap. His mother would get angry whenever we refused to hug, kiss, or sit on his lap, saying that he was just very affectionate. I was talking with my therapist about another thing today, and she said that sometimes the brain blocks out traumatic memories. I suddenly remembered this uncle, because I know that we always saw him, but I barely remember interacting with him beyond these things. My mom says that he probably had a bad childhood and wanted to be closer to us but my dad says that he was a creep wanting to take advantage of the kids in the family. Am I overreacting? 
or was he actually really creepy? Shortly after my 18th birthday, my mom's boyfriend, with whom we had been living for about four years, offered to throw me a graduation party. I should mention that he also has a bio daughter my age, who has the same name as me, but she was off at college at the time. The party was sweet, but all the underage drinking and drugs landed me into some trouble by the end of it. I had my phone and laptop taken away by my mother. This annoyed me because I was a legal adult at the time, and they didn't own any of the devices that they'd taken from me. Her boyfriend was angry too, and I was banned from using the landline. Things took a dark turn when about a day or two later, her boyfriend shows up at my bedroom door. He tells me that they had paid someone to hack my phone and laptop, giving them access to my iCloud, Snapchat, photos, messages, etc. And immediately starts with, huh, I didn't know that you looked so nice under those clothes. I became immediately uncomfortable, knowing that he had been sorting through private messages and footage of me the majority of which were taken while I was underage. He continued shouting obscenities and cornered me in my bedroom until my mom came up to watch. She was visibly disappointed naturally, but I felt my heart break in two as she stood idly by, staring at me in disgust as her boyfriend commanded that I get on my knees. I was in total disbelief. The man was a creep and she did nothing. While nothing actually happened and there was no violence involved, the event left me traumatized. Fast forward four years later, I was never able to regain access to my accounts because the passwords were changed, and I've not seen my mother since. I've been noticing for about a year up to this point that I was consistently receiving emails from Snapchat about somebody trying to log into the account that I no longer had access to plenty of inappropriate content on there from when I was 14 to 17 years old. I knew it was him. Finally, I emailed Snapchat, and they gave me access to the account again. I changed the password and info. Still, like clockwork, I get these emails notifying me of attempted logins. The creepiest part to me is that clearly you don't know the login, so why try again and again? Bordering on deranged behavior in my opinion. My mom has been trying to get in contact with me recently, but she's still dating and living with the guy. Her mental state has always been questionable, but knowing that she sees nothing wrong with her full-blown pedophilic creep of a boyfriend is eerie to me and unsettling. In hindsight, the red flags were always present over the years. Whenever I or his underage daughter had friends over to swim or hot tub, he always felt at liberty to comment on how we looked in our bathing suits, which resulted in major discomfort, but mostly went over our heads as we were so young. And yes, my mom was present on many of these occasions and never did much more than laugh along or give him a playful slap on the wrist. A couple of years ago, it was midsummer night. Me, my fiance, and our two best friends. We four are the best friends gang in our own clan. We were in my parents' house spending the night. Well, back then it was my house too. We were in the room, staying up late, having fun. My parents and my older brother were in some kind of party altogether drinking. Suddenly, my sister comes from her room to tell us to leave that our older brother called her and told us to leave right away. I thought it was stupid. We were just about to go to sleep. I called our brother and demanded the reason. He said that dad had punched mom and was coming home. He said he wasn't gonna let him punch us too. We were thinking about where to go. My fiance's parents were already asleep. They had a very loud dog and there wouldn't be enough room for all of us. One of our other friends was visiting us from another city so they didn't have any place to go. This one friend left had an apartment. Their dad owned, but they needed permission to use it. But this was an emergency, so we went there anyway. In the middle of the night, I packed my car with pillows, clothes, toothbrushes, 
and drove us all to this apartment. It was like 4 a.m. or so. I was shaking and I wasn't able to sleep. I didn't know what to do. Next day, my mom had a bruise on her face, but we never talked about it again. Never. Nothing. I still don't know if that bruise was made by my dad. Why dad got angry. What he would have done to me if we wouldn't have left. And those who wonder, my sister got a ride from her boyfriend. And yes, she was safe too. Back when I was growing up, I had a lot of unsavory stuff happen to me, and I ended up being placed in a foster home. Well, technically it was basically a holding cell for kids to live until they found a real home. Because I was a hurt and untrusting kid at that point, I cycled through my fair share of families. I stayed with an obese single man who I don't remember much about, but I do remember very bad vibes while staying at his house. My case manager must have thought so too, because I went to another family shortly thereafter. This is when I met the family, more specifically, the jerk that this story is about. This wouldn't be my last home, and I didn't live there long at all, so things have gotten foggy over the years, but I was probably between 8 to 10 years old. It was a full house, six of us in total. My foster mother and father, two brothers and a sister. The only person I did not like straight out of the gate was my sister. You know that feeling where you just know when someone wants you off the earth? For me, it feels especially raw when it seems unjustified. Like, I know I was technically a foreign invader, a cancer cell in their home. But guess what? I was a mouthy brat too, and gave her the attitude right back. So it goes without saying, she and I never got along. My brothers, on the other hand, I loved them. We did everything together. They made me feel completely like a part of the family, which is what made what they did to me so confusing. So far, the only slightly unusual thing about this family was that they had an intercom system in their house. Mostly, our mother would use it to tell us when to go to sleep after hours. A few months go by and summer rolls around. They had been pumping me up about swimming in the pool in the backyard for a while. The only thing was, because I don't have a lot of normalcy, I didn't even remotely know how to swim, and I was terrified of open water. On the day it happened, my brothers and I were all out by the pool. They also had a slide that they used for the pool. It went straight into the deep end. Looking back, that entire afternoon looked so set up, like the family planned this or something, I swear. They kept pressuring me to try the slide, and that they would save me if I couldn't swim to the sides. I really wanted to be like them, free to do things without worrying about consequences, and I really believed that they wouldn't let me drown. We were family, right? Okay, great. So I slide down the pool. Seconds later, I start to drown. I don't know which way is up, and I'm fighting for air. For something, anything to grab. Well, it seemed like it went on for way too long. And suddenly, my adoptive father has me barely above the water, holding me up with one hand. If at gunpoint I had to describe his face, I'd say it was like a mix of lust and contempt. It was really blurry and it happened fast, but faces like that are hard to forget. I could let you drown right now, boy. That's what he said to me. Those exact words. I don't recall what he referred to me as before that but I know that it wasn't boy. I was crying and gasping for air, and he just held me there, holding me inches above the water. For what? I still don't get why. This was one of three or four times in my life that I truly believed that I was going to die. Could be worse, I guess. Anyway, eventually, he walked over to the edge of the pool and let me go. Right then, I was so terrified of him. I didn't know what to do. I just lay there and didn't want to be near anyone in that house. I remember one of the strangest things about that experience was the aftermath. We went to a Mexican restaurant that night, and though they all acted like nothing happened, I was confused, angry, and scared. Maybe it was just insignificant to them. Maybe it wasn't an abnormal thing for them, 
or maybe he did it to teach me a lesson or something. Well, anyway, forget that. Forget that family. Soon after, I updated my case manager on the stuff that was happening, and I was out of that house within days. All of you people with both parents, try to make things right with them if they aren't. Always appreciate your family because I don't have any, and I suck at life. Anyway, I just wanted to share some of my life with you all. Thank you for reading. I'm a 22 year old female. My mother is 47 and she's been divorced from my father for about six years. They have a fairly good relationship still, or I guess the best that can be expected under the circumstances. My mom has gone through several men in the past few years, all of whom have had their quirks, but the one that she's with now is just rubbing me the wrong way. For the sake of the story and not giving out any actual names, I'll call him John. John is only 33 or 34, I forget which. He's a bit younger than she is. I didn't know much about him. I had only seen him in pictures until last weekend. He looks nothing above average. Nobody that would throw up red flags. Average height, average build, average face. I live in the same state as my mom, but I live a few hours away. So like I said, I hadn't got a chance to meet him before. The only reason I had gone home was to see my little brother that just got home on leave from the military. John kind of gave me weird vibes from the get-go. He didn't talk much, just kind of sat there and nodded his head a lot. I took this as nerves at first. He also open carries a pistol, but that isn't really uncommon where we're from. He began making me feel a little uncomfortable when he started putting his hands on my mom in a less than appropriate way. like. He would just grab her butt while talking to us and stuff. I know this isn't like the worst thing in the world, but have a level of respect. Also, while my mom would talk to my brother, he would either barge into the conversation or pull her away entirely. Like he didn't want her not giving him attention. It got worse when I was trying to sleep and I could hear them through the walls. It seemed to me like he was trying to make me hear them. That just isn't cool. Me, my brother, and his friend had gone out for lunch the next day. When I came back, I found that my clothes had been tampered with. Like, they were all messed up instead of neatly arranged. And when I was showering, I could swear that he was standing on the other side of the door. At dinner, he kept insulting my mom when she would talk to me or my brother, to the point where my brother had grabbed him by the collar and threatened him to stop. He stopped. The last thing that happened was my brother's friend's girlfriend said that he had tried listening to her while she was in the bathroom. My brother's friend got mad and hit him, so he left and we didn't see him again. So I don't know if he's abusive, a creep, or all of the above. He just gave me bad vibes. I get chills just thinking about him. I didn't feel safe with him, around, and I don't feel safe with my mom around him. Thanks to everyone who is showing concern and making recommendations. I was fortunate enough to make friends with a PI this last year during career day at my school. She's currently recovering from a surgery, so she was able to dig up some info on him. Apparently, about 10 years ago, he had a domestic abuse charge on him. Police didn't do any investigating. Less than a week later, he was administered into an intensive care unit for being beaten pretty severely. That was investigated, but he refused to identify his attacker or give a description. The girl's father was investigated for the assault, but he was cleared. But a popular theory in the comments thread of the local news article she sent me was that her father had gotten a co-worker to commit the attack. So I do have enough proof that he has had a past issue with domestic violence. This happened when I was 17 and still in my senior year of high school. Now, this isn't as creepy as some of the other stories on here, but I wanted to share my experience. My boyfriend at the time texted me 
saying that he had been hanging out at his friend's house, who lived pretty close to me. He asked if I wanted to hang out with them for a bit, so I agreed. He picked me up around 8 p.m., and he drove a couple of miles away from my house to a mobile home park. He parked in front of a pretty large-sized mobile home. I felt a little uneasy because this mobile home park wasn't in the safest neighborhood. The place itself looked a little run down, just like the rest of the homes here. We entered through the right side door up the small stairs in the carport. Directly in front of you, when you first walk in, there's a kitchen and a dining room. If you look to the left, there's the living room that's located in front of the home. If you look towards the right, there were doors to the bedrooms and bathroom. This was probably the biggest mobile home I've been in. It was a bit messy. There were a sink full of dishes, kitchen table piled up with junk, beer bottles everywhere. The living room had a coffee table full of weed, pipes, bongs, pill bottles, etc. Just a bit of backstory. My boyfriend at the time had a bit of a drug problem that later on became worse. Before you judge of me, I wasn't aware of the severity at the time. I thought that he occasionally partied and experimented, which is sadly really common in the small town that I grew up in. Little did I know, he was doing a lot more than I knew of behind my back. So this problem that he had led to me meeting a lot of his friends who were also into the same things as him. I was introduced to his friend who was sitting on the living room couch. I don't actually remember his name, but we'll call him Jake. He seemed friendly. He was also about our age. I quickly learned that he lived with his aunt and uncle, who I was also introduced to. His aunt wasn't social at all. She was in the kitchen, then left to one of the bedrooms and closed the door. There was something strange about Jake's uncle. Something just seemed off to me, but he was overly friendly to me, so I brushed it off. He was probably in his mid-50s, thin, kind of tall, like 5'10", and had blondish gray hair that was receding. Jake's uncle started packing a bowl for everyone. I'm not sure if this is allowed to say here, but he sprinkled a white substance on top of it. I sat down on the couch while they all passed the piece around. I declined. Weed was still illegal at this time, and I'd never been a social smoker. I remember his uncle asking why I'm not smoking, and I just said that I didn't want to. I really forgot how this part got brought up, but Jake's uncle overheard my boyfriend and I talking about cats. He looked over at me and said, Oh, you like cats? Want to see mine? Being the cat lover that I am, I got excited. Oh, you have a cat? He was like, yeah, do you want to see her? Now, I was assuming that he was going to bring her out, so I said, sure. Then he got up to lead me down the hall, motioning to me to follow, saying, come on, this way. I looked at my boyfriend puzzled and asked if he wanted to come with me, but he didn't feel like getting up. I really didn't want to come off as being rude if I didn't follow, so I got up and followed him down the hall to the very last door located at the end of the hallway. He opened the door for me, and I walked inside the bedroom. I noticed a shotgun next to the bed leaning against the wall. I got the vibe that this was possibly Jake's uncle's room. Jake seemed too young to own a gun, and this room didn't look like his style. It looked like a guest bedroom or a room for someone older. I wondered why his aunt went inside the other room. I'm not sure what was going on in their personal life. Maybe they slept in separate beds. It could have definitely been a possibility. Anyways, to the right of the bed was a beautiful white long-haired cat on her scratching post inside the room. I went over to say hi and pet her. Jake's uncle walked in and I heard the door close quietly behind him, almost as if he wanted to be discreet that he was doing it. I jumped up and looked over at the door and then at him. He must have noticed how scared I looked because he said, this is so the cat won't get out. He came and kneeled down next to me and started petting the cat. My cut feeling told me that something wasn't right. I felt sick to my stomach. I went back towards the door and he yelled out, no, the cat's gonna get out. But I didn't care. I ignored him. That's when I realized that it was actually locked and not just closed. I unlocked it and swung it open. The cat did indeed run out, so he wasn't making that up. Regardless, I just met this man, so why did he lock a 17-year-old girl alone in his room with him? Why couldn't he ask my boyfriend to come with us too? 
this room was located on the far end, opposite side of the living room, where no one could hear us. I went back to the living room so fast, and I asked my boyfriend if he can take me home, which I would never consider doing, considering that he wasn't sober. But I was desperate. He was hesitant and asked me, right now? I lied and said that my dad wanted me home right now, pretending to look at a text on my phone. When we were back in the car, I was so relieved to be out of there. I started telling my boyfriend how Jake's uncle closed us in that room together, and I felt really uncomfortable. He told me that I was just overthinking the situation, and that his uncle was a good person. So, I always thought that maybe I was overthinking it, but I never changed how uncomfortable I felt about it. Please, always trust your gut feelings, regardless about what anyone says about it. I never saw Jake or his uncle again. I never wanted to go back there. Over 10 years later, I still get creeped out when I think about it. Edit based on some feedback. I want to be clear that I'm not for certain whether or not this person had any bad intentions. I know that this forum is for mildly creepy encounters, which is why I wanted to post it on here. I've read other stories on here and felt that this was appropriate to share. I want to bring awareness to everyone to be careful out there and to trust your gut feeling. It's so much better to be safe than sorry. I also wanted to bring awareness to the older generation as well, that there should be boundaries, especially when you're with people who are underage. When I was 15 years old, my great uncle passed away due to a sudden heart attack. Me and my father had to clean out his house since no one else in the family wanted to. My great uncle was very much loved by us all and was, well, really one of the nicest and most loving out of us all. My father was just as broken up about losing him as everyone else, but the job had to be done. So we got there early in the morning to get it done. His house was very neat and well organized so it would be done in a day or two tops. I remember as a kid, we would always play over at his house when my dad had to work. He would let us play anywhere in the house but the attic. He made it very clear to us that going up and down the ladder to the attic was very dangerous. Therefore, we never went up there and never thought anything of it, even though he would go up there sometimes for about 30 minutes and then come back down never actually bringing anything down with him or taking anything up there. Well, anyway, while we were cleaning, I decided to finally go up to the attic just to see if there was anything up there. It was completely empty up there except for two boxes that were tucked away in a corner. Thinking nothing of it, I picked up the dusty boxes and took them downstairs. Once I got to the living room, I opened them, expecting to see some papers because the boxes were so light. Instead, I found all of these pictures. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of pictures of what I could tell were three different women, all from angles where you could clearly tell that they didn't know that they were being photographed. He had pictures from daytime to night and from multiple locations. Some they were undressed in and others were just of them doing everyday things like cleaning and cooking. With every picture I looked through, my heart started to beat faster and faster. Looking closer, I realized one of the women was his wife who had passed several years earlier. I looked on the back of the pictures and they were named. I didn't want to freak my family out without knowing exactly what I was looking at. So out of curiosity, I googled the other two names and found one of the ladies on Facebook. So I know that this is messed up to say, but I was glad to see that she was alive and okay. Once finding that out, I showed the pictures to my dad, and he was just as shocked as I was. He took the boxes, and I've never seen them again. We never spoke of it again. Still, every once in a while, I find myself wondering why he had those pictures, and if he took them himself, or had someone else take them. I love my great uncle very much, and couldn't imagine him being anything less than a stand-up guy. I don't know what to think, to be honest. I know that... This might not be a scary story, but it most certainly freaked me and my father out pretty bad.
This is the story of how my spoiled, self-entitled jerk of a little brother laced my food and got away with it. I have lots of stories about him that I'm willing to talk about in separate posts. But of them all, this is by far the worst. None of my other situations involve anything like this, which is why it's so shocking to me. This goes back to three years ago. I was 12 at the time, and I was back home in Belgium visiting family for Easter. I was making soup for myself and I needed to go pee. I went to do so, but I asked my little brother Marcus, who was probably around 9 or 10, to stir it for a minute while I went to go to the restroom. He refuses, saying that I'd have to pay him. Typical Marcus, even at 10 years old, he was still finding a way to throw money into the mix. I told him I'd be a minute and I left. I came back to find he's gone, so I was annoyed, but whatever. I had the soup and went to go practice a new song that my band was going to play. I was practicing the bass line for girls and boys around five minutes before I started to feel really ill. I started getting really dizzy. My head started pounding and I got these awful pains in my stomach. A few minutes later, I made my way to the bathroom and I threw up and I continued to throw up for the rest of the day. I got violently unwell to the point where I was in tears and could hardly set because of the pain coming from my stomach. I spent the entirety of the next day trying not to throw up. I have a severe garlic allergy, so I checked to see if the soup had any garlic that I was unaware of in it. There wasn't, but I needn't have bothered because Marcus came to me a few hours later and told me the truth. Turns out, while I was in the restroom, Marcus laced my soup. He slipped some garlic into it and said that he was curious to see what would happen. I thought that my parents must have made him come clean, but turns out he hadn't even told them. So through a mix of coughing, burping, and trying to keep stuff down, I told my mom, who knew what state I was in, but didn't know that Marcus was responsible, that it was Marcus who did that to me. Her response was not good at all. She told me that it was probably an accident, an innocent mistake, and that he's very young. So he got no punishment, and I was in pain for days. He never apologized, and still hasn't now. I've also made sure that he's not in the room when I'm cooking anything. So I've always been a fan of those true crime shows, and I watch a lot of Investigation Discovery. I also have an uncle that I've never met, and my mom won't talk to. I'm 26, and even now, she said even though I'm old enough to make my own decisions, that she would really rather that I not attempt to make contact or respond to any of his attempts. It seemed really important to her, so I pushed down the curiosity and never made contact. Well, about a year ago, I'm watching Investigation Discovery with my dog, and my mom's hometown was mentioned. I decided to call my grandpa when the episode ended to ask why he never told me about a full-on murder in his exceptionally small town, knowing full well that I'm interested in that stuff. Well, it's moving along when I hear a name that I recognize. I'm trying to place this name, wondering if they've commented on my grandma's Facebook or something. It didn't take long for that name to click. I'd heard it before because it's one of my uncles. Holy cow, right? Turns out they caught on to my uncle's name because he'd robbed a chain of convenience stores with this guy who'd murdered his wife. The murderer also crashed at my uncle's place afterward. After being pressed by the police, it turns out that my uncle had helped plan the murder. I texted my sister as this was playing out and agreed to never tell mom that we knew. After 20 plus years of wondering why my mom was so adamant about me not having anything to do with the guy, it all made sense. Obviously, when all was said and done, I did some digging online and he had an extensive record of some exceptionally shady stuff. So my uncle was a creep at definitely the wrong moment as well. Our family was grouped together back in 2019 
over the remorse of losing my nan. He started talking to me about what I was wearing and that I lost weight. I was wearing a nice black dress with a white cardigan and black leggings. I'm sitting next to my dad, who is also visibly uncomfortable. My uncle has always been close to us, but he never really spoke with me, you know? He starts talking about my hair and that it was a shame that I cut it and blah, blah, blah. I was visibly confused. I was just here for a free meal and to feel sad about my nan's death with my mom, who was going through a rough time. He starts talking more and more to me about fishing and how he's going to take me out fishing with him and his girlfriend. I was more set on how his girlfriend tried to murder him and now they're back together. I noticed a bit how he looked at me. I just kept getting more and more uncomfortable until he put his hand on my thigh. I moved seats as in I swapped with my dad and then on I just comforted my mom. My dad spoke to him and he said, I kid you not. Oh, that I was just fixing her dress. It was wrinkling. I was so confused when my dad said this. I mean, it's meant to wrinkle. I'm sitting down after all. He reassured me that he wasn't trying to make any advances and that it was fine. I believed for the most part, like I've known this man my whole life. He was never a creep for most of it. Like he let me sit on his lap when we drove around the complex. He let me steer the car. I was only four or five at the time. That was cool in retrospect for me being five and thinking he was so cool. But he didn't tell my parents that we were going for a joy ride in his new truck. So he was always a creep. And I was genuinely scared of him my whole life. He did it once more a few months after this coincidence. And me and my parents have stayed clear of him ever since. Or at least, I was never alone with him. When I was 14, my aunt and uncle hosted a family reunion. This is a yearly tradition that they do since they are very social and most of us live in different states. We took the short flight to Arizona and were first to arrive. We brought our dog and introduced my cousin's dog to her. Us kids played on our older cousin's Xbox as our parents talked and gossiped in the kitchen as more relatives piled into the house. Eventually, most of the family had arrived and the house had gotten significantly louder. My younger brother, who was a very loud person, was screaming on the bouncy house with my other younger siblings and younger cousins. It was somewhere around the afternoon when we were all feeling pretty hungry. My older cousin asked his mom when food would be ready. However, she said it would be another hour. We were kids, and kids don't take no for an answer. So we hatched a plan for my older cousin to secretly drive to a store buy some chocolate and drive home. But our younger siblings wanted to go. We decided me, my older cousin, his younger sister, and my younger sister would go, and the others would stay at home in case anyone thought it got too quiet. We made our journey to the nearest store, and my older cousin bought some chocolate. For some reason, I was standing outside the car watching the store when this woman approached me. She asked me some pretty normal questions like, are your parents inside the store and are you all right? I answered with a simple yes and waited for her to leave. However, she did something I didn't expect. She grabbed my arm firmly and dragged me towards a lone black car parked on the other side of the parking lot. I froze, not knowing what to do and just look up at her. That's when I heard my cousin scream, hey, what are you doing? The woman promptly let go of me and just drove off. I jumped into the car and we floored it back home. Being dumb kids, we didn't tell our parents about this incident. And now that woman is roaming free. Okay. So this is going to be a long one about my creepy uncle who used all kinds of weird technology to spy on anyone that he could, including my family and I. So my family of five happily welcomed my uncle, who is my mom's brother, into our home as a roommate a little over 10 years ago, maybe even longer. 
we'll call him David for the purpose of this post. David was a 40-year-old male at the time, was at first kind, hardworking, and to himself for most of the years he spent in our home. He's always been really interested in technology and spyware. If it had a camera or could listen and record, he was highly interested in it. He was pretty private about his room and computers, and we never invaded his personal space because he never gave us a reason to. As time passed, I'd say six years, we noticed his behavior got a little more introverted and private. He was extremely depressed and paranoid, but refused to address these issues. So we left him alone for the most part. As far as I know, he was involved with chat rooms and listening devices. He started drinking pretty heavily and would sometimes steal my mother's prescription pills to catch a high. Again, these things were pretty touch and go, and no one in the household really knew how to address his worsening behavior. My dad would occasionally question him and his actions. We don't allow alcohol in the home because my dad used to struggle with substance abuse himself and has been living sober for quite some time now. Anyways, we gave him an ultimatum, stop drinking or leave. This worked for some time, but he would just hide from us when he drank, lock himself in his basement room for hours, sometimes even days. We knew he was drinking though, because at random hours of the day, you could hear anger-fueled screams coming from his room in the basement level, or loud techno music that would thump until 12 a.m. The last two years specifically have been really hostile and strange between him and our family. Anytime he would return home, he'd be highly intoxicated and ready for bed. None of us would interfere because it wasn't uncommon to get into an argument with him about his odd behavior and heavy drinking. He became really hostile towards myself, a 19-year-old female at the time, and father who was 45 plus years old. He would purchase a lot of strange devices designed for listening or watching, which made us all intensely uneasy and on edge. My father told me once that he came home with these new sunglasses and excitedly told my dad that they're great for watching people and that he'd spent the whole day at the park lurking on strangers. I don't believe that he had any malicious intent towards anyone but his fascination with spying was honestly unnerving and a big red flag. We demanded that he leave and seek residence elsewhere, gave him a deadline, and even offered him help finding a new place to live. He ignored us for weeks and pretty much just refused to leave our home. My mother didn't know how to handle the situation, especially because it was her brother. She feels like we've betrayed family or forsaken him. Anyways, it wasn't uncommon to find small, strange devices around the house that were absolutely unexplainable if you've never seen them before. Things like movement tracking devices, infrared cameras or mics that would record any audio that occurred in the room it was placed in. He also had control of our Wi-Fi, and I'm positive that he had access to our browser search histories or Wi-Fi related information in general. If we confronted him about his behavior or asked him to pack up and leave, he would threaten us. I see everything you do. I heard what you said the other night. Although, never knowing what kind of information he was trying to blackmail us with, we were all very uncomfortable with the idea of our privacy being breached. Not having anything to hide though, his threats were pretty hollow and ineffective. My dad wanted to test David and see if he was using devices at our home while he was away from the house. My dad would wait for David to leave in the morning and go to work. My dad would then shut the Wi-Fi off sometimes even the power breaker, to see if he would react while away from the house. Sure enough, David would return to our house immediately and question him. Why is the Wi-Fi off? Why is the power off? My dad would ask him how he knew the Wi-Fi had been off while he was away from the home. Strange behavior, needless to say. Each time my dad did this, he would return to the house immediately to recover the Wi-Fi and his devices. If he was home and the Wi-Fi went down, this man would have an ultimate tantrum. Everyone would undergo a serious interrogation and be bombarded with accusations involving the Wi-Fi not working. He began threatening my dad specifically and would show him this weird spyware that he had purchased. David would place the device against the wall and could hear anyone speaking throughout the home. So much as faint whispers could be heard from the device. David wanted us to know what he could hear, 
and everything that we were doing. It was his scare tactic in order for him to remain in the house with us. When he continued to refuse to leave our home after being given a proper eviction notice, we had to seek assistance from the police slash court to have him legally removed from our home. We also changed all the locks in our home to prevent any unwelcome visits from David. Anyways, he's been out of our home for nearly six months, and we're still experiencing strange things that have us all on edge of our seats. Strange faint beeps from different areas of the house, unknown Bluetooth devices that are supposedly 10 meters or less away, and wires that run all around the house. I think we're all just paranoid from his consistent spying over the years, but sometimes I still come across strange unidentifiable devices around the home. Most of them look inactive and not in use, but I end up smashing them regardless. David tried to insist that we keep his Wi-Fi in service after he left, but we had no interest in using his Wi-Fi and immediately removed his router from our home. I discovered that David had climbed through one of our backyard basement windows into the home at some point. I only noticed someone had been in the backyard because of a fresh snow which revealed his enormous boot-like footprints. The night that the snow fell, no one was home until later hours. My brother had moved out nearly two months before. My mother returned home from work at 3 a.m. My dad returned home around 12 a.m. My sister had been staying at a friend's house for the weekend, and I returned home at 7 a.m. after work. I go into the backyard every day to throw ball for the dog, and when I came across the prints, I immediately felt scared because no one in my family wears a size 12 shoe, and after questioning everyone in the home, they all ensured me that they had not been in the backyard as of last night. It was obvious that someone, most likely David, entered our home through the backyard. What for, we don't know. We haven't found any changes in our home since his unwelcome entry. We have filed a restraining order against him for safety measures, but to no avail. He's still spamming my mother with cryptic texts and threats over the phone. We're so thankful that David is no longer in our home, but somehow, he's still...
Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Psycho Family Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. When I was around 10, Thanksgiving was hosted at my house. There was already some family drama between two of my aunts from years before. They refused to attend the same parties and never wanted to speak of the other or about anything involving my cousins. I was much older when I finally knew why. Apparently, Aunt A thought that Aunt B was trying to sleep with her husband when Aunt B denied the accusation, claiming that they were just good friends. Aunt A refused to ever speak to Aunt B again and vice versa. Anyways, Thanksgiving at my house this particular year, a truce was set and everyone was invited for dinner. Naturally, each aunt was in their separate corner with their kids and each generally ignored one another. But there weren't any slight glances or whispered insults, so we had dinner in peace. Now the drama begins. Aunt B decided to leave the party first. She said her farewells and grabbed her kids to load them in the car. My mom, a few more aunts, and cousins went out with her to thank her for coming and being a good sport. Her eldest son, my least favorite cousin, was approached by a little girl walking his way from across the street. She said hello and asked if so-and-so was his dad. He said yeah, and she straight up said, He's my dad too. You're my brother. Dead silence. Everyone knew that it was true except for my aunt and her kids. The reason I didn't like this cousin was because he was just like his dad. Arrogant, stubborn, macho, etc. The apple did not fall far from the tree. Whenever her husband came to drink at parties without his wife, he'd laugh about all of his affairs and the hush money that he paid to keep the other kids fed. He mocked the man who was raising his kids as his own and who knew his wife was openly unfaithful. I had no doubts that my cousin would be just as scummy when he grew up. He made a disgusted face and told her that she was too dirty and full of fleas to be anything special. She started crying and Aunt B called her a little liar and that she needed to go back home instead of spreading lies. She shoved my cousin in the car and drove away. The girl ran back home. We were all shocked into silence, but my mom was angry. She immediately went to Aunt A and demanded to know if she'd been the one to orchestrate everything. She denied it, but for someone who loved gossip, she was very cool about the whole thing. Everyone knew. After everyone left, I asked my mom why no one ever told Aunt B about her unfaithful husband and the other kids, but my mom told me that she'd known for a long time. I thought they'd get a divorce for sure after that day, but everything went on like it always did and my cousin still thinks that that girl is lower than dirt on his shoes. Not my family, but kind of connected to it. My dad and mom were invited to a friend's family Christmas get-together, but they declined so they could stay in town. My dad loaned his car to his buddy, though, and thought that that was the end of it. On the news the next day, they recognized my dad's car, filled with dead children. Turns out, the buddy's dad went kind of bonkers, shot everyone in the family as they were walking into the house for the Christmas get-together, and strangled all of the children. He placed the adults' dead bodies in the living room and stuffed all of the children into my dad's car, the one that he loaned to his buddy, and the dad drove the car into a ditch. Dad and mom really dodged a bullet, but their good friend, whom they considered their brother, who died trying to save the children, did not. This is about my estranged uncle, 
auntie and cousin. We didn't have any contact for something like 20 years because of a falling out between my dad and my uncle. Fast forward to last year, auntie turns up at parents' house out of the blue without uncle or cousin. Tells us that uncle is dead after a prolonged illness. She didn't contact us to tell us at the time, citing falling out as the reason. Mutual friends who we're still in contact with didn't know about it when we spoke with them. No contact during funeral arrangements. We ask about the illness, and we're given some story about a trip to Thailand several years earlier, where Uncle is supposed to have gotten a tattoo and contracted hepatitis. Uncle developed a drinking problem, which affected his kidneys, and along with the hepatitis resulted in organ failure. Told that there was no chance of a transplant because of alcohol problem. He was brought home to die, and did after a week or so. We ask about the burial arrangements. We were told that he was cremated and kept at home in an urn. We asked about the funeral, and we were told that the attendees were cousin, auntie, and her parents, and some non-mutual friends. We speak with a friend of the family who's able to check the registration of the death. We can't find anything. We ask about this. We were told that the death was registered in a different county, so that must be the reason that our friend can't find uncle's death on registry. So, friends and family had no idea. There is no grave. Friend who works in a position to check for the death, having been registered, isn't able to find anything, and there was no sort of contact during the illness. The point of death or the funeral. Just an unannounced visit, nearly seven months after the fact. We only have her word to go on. Cousin wasn't present at the visit and ignored the contact that we attempted. Something seems messed up here. I heard this story just last week. My great-grandpa had four kids pretty young and was dealing with some depression due to how hard his life was. He left my great-grandma out of nowhere when she was only 28, and years later she saw him again with his new wife and four new kids, with the same names. He pretty much made a whole new version of his old family once he had the money to support them. Their last name is now infamous to my family and I've actually met a kid with that last name, and I've always wanted to ask who his great-grandpa is, just to see if he's somehow related to me. My mom's uncle lived modestly in a trailer and had no job, outside of a few manual labor jobs here and there. He would routinely get behind on bills, and often had his water and other utilities cut off or threatened to be cut off. On several occasions, he would disappear to a large city, three hours north of his home for a few days. Every time he came back, he had tons of cash. One night, over a poker game, some people were talking trash, and he mentioned that none of them had any idea what it was like to kill a man. One of the people there was my mom's cousin, who claimed that he overheard the conversation. Of course, they probed him for more info, but he wouldn't say anything else. Everyone in the family knew that he had a knack for coming into large sums of cash, but no one ever really knew how he got it, other than maybe poker. He died about 10 years ago. I'm 37, and I just heard this story for the first time over Thanksgiving dinner last week. TLDR my great uncle may have been a hitman. Sometimes a home can be a very unsafe place to be. My sister and I are about a year apart in age. I'm older than her. And we've been really close for as long as we can remember other than the typical sibling rivalry stuff, nothing too major. However, we were both raised by a single mom. Our mom was a decent mom, 
but she was a bit immature and distant at times. Between my mom working 40 to 50 hours a week and my sister and me at school, we barely saw her most times. Many times on the occasion that we would be at home at the same time as her, she would have some new boyfriend with her. Most of the guys that she brought back were normal guys. One of them even helped me improve my baseball throwing and batting, but that's another story for another time. One time when I was 11 and my sister was 10, my mom brought home a guy named Ken. Not his real name. The name has been changed for reasons that will soon become obvious. My sister and I get a seriously bad vibe from Ken as soon as he enters the house. He starts eyeing my sister in a weird way as soon as he sees her. Thankfully, my sister noticed and said, I gotta meet some friends. I'll be back later. She left the house and met up with her friends. I legit had to leave as soon as well. I had to get to baseball practice. Cut to a few weeks later. Mom says that Ken was arrested and is in jail. My sister and I are shocked, but we would get the shock of a lifetime a few days later. I'm just casually browsing through the newspaper one afternoon, and I see Ken. It's a mugshot. He was arrested in front of an elementary school after he was trying to lure girls into his car. The police had also been observing him, parked in front of the same school over about a week long, doing things. I won't say what he was doing, but I think you can guess. I show the short article in the mugshot to my sister, and she turns as white as a ghost. We confront mom about it, and she suddenly denies that it's Ken. She then tells us to forget about it. That gave us an idea of the type of person our mom was. It was also that point where my sister and I started to watch out for each other more. We essentially had to raise ourselves on from that point. And we often stayed at friends' houses whenever mom had a boyfriend over, so that nothing like that would ever happen again. My sister and I occasionally talked to her. But now that we're both grown adults, we were all but estranged from her. Edit. I need to clear some stuff up about my mom. She was never abusive or neglectful. She was just naive and immature. She worked hard to keep myself and my sister fed, clothed, and loved. But there were plenty of times where she was more concerned with having a boyfriend than taking care of me and my sister. She also had me when she was only 18 and my sister when she was 19. She only brought home guys that she had known for a bit, but she's also not a good read of people. Most of the guys she brought home were actually really cool people. The aforementioned guy at the beginning of the story who helped me out with my baseball skills, for example. This was an experience that my sister and I look back on and we learned to be better because of it. This story is very old. I was a kid when it happened and I don't remember all of it. My family all lived in the same apartment complex and we got together quite often. My great aunt and her son lived alone in their apartment and she always complained that she felt alone. So we visited her quite often. Her son was 30 or so. I don't remember his exact age and I haven't seen him in years. He's technically my cousin, but I've always referred to him as an uncle just to make it easier. He was always very clingy with me and my other young cousin. My parents never let me alone with him and my dad never trusted him. I remember that he always asked for hugs and gave sloppy kisses only to me and my cousin. I was around 10 and my cousin was 14 the last time we saw him and he constantly asked us to sit on his lap. His mother would get angry whenever we refused to hug, kiss, or sit on his lap, saying that he was just very affectionate. I was talking with my therapist about another thing today, and she said that sometimes the brain blocks out traumatic memories. I suddenly remembered this uncle, because I know that we always saw him, but I barely remember interacting with him beyond these things. My mom says that he probably had a bad childhood and wanted to be closer to us but my dad says that he was a creep wanting to take advantage of the kids in the family. Am I overreacting? 
or was he actually really creepy? Shortly after my 18th birthday, my mom's boyfriend, with whom we had been living for about four years, offered to throw me a graduation party. I should mention that he also has a bio daughter my age, who has the same name as me, but she was off at college at the time. The party was sweet, but all the underage drinking and drugs landed me into some trouble by the end of it. I had my phone and laptop taken away by my mother. This annoyed me because I was a legal adult at the time and they didn't own any of the devices that they'd taken from me. Her boyfriend was angry too, and I was banned from using the landline. Things took a dark turn when about a day or two later, her boyfriend shows up at my bedroom door. He tells me that they had paid someone to hack my phone and laptop, giving them access to my iCloud, Snapchat, photos, messages, etc. And immediately starts with, huh, I didn't know that you looked so nice under those clothes. I became immediately uncomfortable, knowing that he had been sorting through private messages and footage of me, the majority of which were taken while I was underage. He continued shouting obscenities and cornered me in my bedroom until my mom came up to watch. She was visibly 